the unicorn here. Um, I've got you in the kitchen with me uh, doing this recording. It's such a beautiful, lovely, snowy morning. And you know you've made it when snow is not an issue for you. I was telling a friend of mine last night that, um, and that's just me pouring some coffee um, out, of my, out of my French press. I told my friend, you know you've made it when snow is not an issue for you. <laughs> you know, uh, like people who vacation in Aspen because, well, snow's not an issue for them. They get to keep warm and have a good time in the snow. (laughs) So anyhow, that's just one of those things. But I wanted to talk again about dark femininity because I feel so strongly about the men on YouTube who are telling women, you know, that they're not feminine because they fight back or because they're argumentative or because, you know, they pop off and things like this and I'm like you know that's the that's the swoop you know that's that you know don't let them talk you out of your power um I think that might be the phrase for uh this series of things I wanted to talk today about um a role model for me who for the longest time I loved her so deeply and listened to her music so much as a child that I had her accent for a good portion of my life, maybe one third of my life. And that is Alanis Morissette. Yes, you heard that. Isn't it ironic? Don't you think, right? Hi, I recommend biting off more than you can chew to anyone. I certainly do, right? I want you to know that I'm happy for you. You, you're not alone. You're uninvited, right? She experienced so much dark emotion and I dare any man listening to call that woman masculine. You can't. (laughs) You can't. And I mean, she has a song called Forgiven and the lyrics, she's like, uh, My brothers, they never went blind for what they did, but I may as well have in the name of the father, the skeptic and the son, you know? So basically what she's saying is like, she's, she's talking about patriarchy and she's talking about the way, uh, you know, Abrahamic faiths are where men can just mess up and mess up and mess up. And a woman, you know, you commit a sin and it's like, oh my God, you know, you're just such a sinner. You need to go say 10 million Hail Marys and go to the confessional and, and, you know, uh, (laughs) repent and be lashed for what's gone on, you know? Um, she talks about being cheated on and you ought to know, you know, she talks about, uh, and, and it's funny because this is actually with uncle Joey from uh, full house. That's not slander. That's a fact. <laughs> All right. So basically he cheated on her with an older version of her. And, you know, I mean, what did, uh, oh my God, the, the power on this woman to the point where Alanis Morissette was chosen to play God in a movie. This is how powerful this woman is. Look, the only other person we know that plays God in a movie is who? One, two, three, Morgan Freeman, right? So nice they let him play God twice because there's something extremely majestic about that man. Forgive me, I'm, uh, I'm opening my creamer and getting a spoon. Um, but it's crazy, like, uh, any song, like, I, I suffered with severe depression um, as a teenager. So from age maybe 11 to, I would say maybe 16. And Alanis Morissette, the power of this woman, nursed me. Nursed me. I mean, I would sit in a dark room and turn on some Alanis Morissette or Matchbox 20 and just vibe all the way out. Maybe some Fiona Apple too. Fiona Apple is also working with a lot of dark femininity, right? She's got that song called Criminal and I dare any man, any man, anywhere to call that woman masculine, all right? So when African-American women perform dark femininity, so many people, you know, they want to say, hey, 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 you're being masculine. And really it's just gaslighting because When white women do more than that, you know, no one calls them masculine. They're like, she's, you know, she's upset. She's got issues, you know. 
But I mean, Alanis Morissette, you know, she wrote a song about helping a, a friend through suicide. What was it? Dear Dar, your mom, my friend. Um, it's on that uh, supposed former infatuation junkie. Like you could just literally go through an entire jagged little pill, uh, LP, any, and and you just sit back, relax, and watch dark femininity do its magical ish. Watch that order out of chaos before your eyes. Watch that woman flip the heck out. Cause a bed that was made and I'm not gonna fade as soon as you close your eyes and you know it and you know it. Like, like she just goes the hell off from song to song. Like <laughs> she's letting somebody have it. Even if that somebody is herself. That's how beautiful her dark femininity goes because there's a level of accountability. Now hear me out because you'll notice that like uh, a lot of, how do I say this? People love the Linus Morissette for her dark femininity and when her femininity became light, they're like, come on, man, where's that power? Come on, man, feminism, be the leader of the feminist movement. And she was like, why would you want me to lead a movement when I'm 20 freaking one? Like, bro, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Talk to 21 Savage, but not me. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. But then by the time, and I'm moving into my office here, so there's um, a little less, acu uh, less acoustics and a better sound. But I mean, they expected that out of her. And by the time she turned 41, she's just like, yo, like, it is what it is. Like, I'm mature enough to lead something like that. But before, you know, that was just a bunch of raw emotion. And that raw, untethered, dark femininity is what spiraled her into superstardom. I mean, you could go to the blackest, black, bliggity black, crip walking, bee walking, pant sagging, D-boy house. And some woman in that house one or some, somebody in the biggest, blackest, ghettoest trap house. Isn't it ironic? <laughs> Don't you think? Right? Alanis affected us all in the 90s and the early 2000s. And as her femininity was getting brighter and brighter, you start to hear songs like Thank You. But even that song, thank you, thank you, India, thank you, terror, thank you, disillusionment, right? Like, you can still hear the dark femininity in that because it's, it's spiritual, it's powerful. It's almost like she's a hermit experiencing life all alone, going through these things all alone, even though she's with other people. It's like she's got this, I wanted to say God's eye view, but, you know, no one's got a God's eye view, but God. Um, speaking of which, oh my God, I woke up this morning from a dream about the Demiurge. My, 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 who was that song? Johnny Gill. Anyhow, I'm off the topic, but Alanis Morissette is probably one of my favorite examples of dark femininity because all that aggression, all that fight, all those tears, all those chaotic emotions that she experienced on stage for all of us to see. I remember one time my cousin, um, I have a very beautiful uh, cousin that lives in Las Vegas. And when I say beautiful, I mean, there's a particular uh, casino where her and four other girls are on the billboard. So they literally go there to see my cousin. <laughs> okay. She's black and Mexican. Shout out to all the Afro Latinas out there. Anyhow, like, she went to an Alanis Morissette concert and she was like, girl, she spent the, she spent half the whole concert like this. And then she bent down at the waist, you know, like basically Alanis was in a trance. Like she, she was performing, but she was in trance. And so the, the spirituality on dark femininity is just so heavy in such a beautiful way. Like it, it's like that healing that you need. Like when a woman is aching inside and she's been going through whatever, like maybe she's, you know, what's that woman's name? Uh, Melody Holt, you know, and Melody is going through all these things about her marriage and, and giving everything. Ooh, that song. No, I'm not going to cry. I'm not, I'm not going to shed no tears. Right. Mary J. Blige. Whoo. That song is dark femininity. And it's cool because dark and dark femininity, there is still love. 
in dark femininity, there is still compassion, but also in dark femininity, there is liberty. There is liberty. There is that process of freeing yourself from the F-ish, that process of I'm not going to take it anymore, that process of, you know, I, I can do this. I can do this on my own. I don't need you. I don't need a crutch. I can walk, right? Like, here's the deal. I cannot define for you what dark femininity is because it's so broad, but I can make you feel it. I can give you the examples and the people, and this will likely be a series because this is like, this is my ode to Alanis Morissette. I mean, literally, I, oh my God, like, I could cry at the way that this woman changed my life. So many people listen to her hits, but me, like I'd be somewhere in a black room, in a dark room, listening to the entire CD without pressing skip. This woman molded me. She helped me. She was the remedy for so much depression and so much feminine pain, so much feminine pain. The things that we go through as women where, you know, a boy kisses a girl, you know, he's a champion. A girl kisses a boy, you know, she's a lost cause. She's a slut. She's a hoe. She's a freak. Got a different every day of the week. Ah, uh, it's true. So I was, I, I went off like that on that Little Kim song because Little Kim actually does a lot of, I mean, she does a lot of light and dark femininity. But when she goes dark, she goes dark. And, you know, it's beautiful. Moral of the story. Let me let me sip this coffee really quick. Shout out to Darren's coffee because that is what I am drinking. This is some bougie, high quality, high quality, okay? Coffee. Bismillah. Mm. Oh my God. Okay. Um, like I said, it's morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I just, I would challenge you to listen to Uninvited by Alanis Morissette as a woman and tell me you don't feel that song in your heart. I don't care if your favorite music is gospel, if it's R&B, if it's jazz, hip hop, rap. I dare you to go listen to Uninvited. I dare you to go listen to Isn't It Ironic? And tell me you don't feel that with your mind, body, and spirit. If you don't feel that in your hair follicles, that is the power of dark femininity. Dark femininity will create order out of chaos in a major way. And it's something you cannot... That's that Oya. That's that Kali. Maybe Kali will be next. Kali is that dark Indian goddess who's portrayed as blue and oftentimes portrayed as black with the multiple arms and, you know, severs the heads of her enemies and does a death dance like she's just badass, you know. Um, and Alanis Morissette actually has a song. How long will this take, Kali? How long till enlightenment? How much longer till you completely absolve me? Right. Um and that's also on her uh, LP, Supposed Former Infatuation Junkie. So like, it came as no surprise to me that Alanis Morissette would gravitate towards Kali as a deity, right? Even before that song came out, I was like in high school and they were like, oh, study a blah, blah, blah goddess. And I was like, mm, Kali, right? So... When you're experiencing dark femininity and these men are like, oh, I see your, your masculine jawline poking out. Oh, you're arguing with a man. You're nah, you tell them that's dark femininity and to suck it up. And to suck it up. Don't let them take your power. I'm up at a unicorn. My coffee is good and my morning is good. Good morning to you. Like, share, comment, subscribe, comment below. I want to hear what you guys have to say about dark femininity because I think I'm about to go on a roll <laughs> with this because it. I don't want to see black women gaslit out of their dark femininity when our dark femininity is what raised like, oh my God, like there are some women, some African-American women, some all women of all races who practice masculinity and that is a freaking fact. Now, I would argue that... Uh, Never mind. I, I don't want to say that. 
what I was going to say that I wasn't going to say is that I would argue that um, white American women practice the most uh, sincere masculinity, you know, given their femininity movement and the fact that their men run the world and they have put them, some of them have put themselves up against, up against you know, that patriarchy that runs their world and they can only compete with it by matching wits, by by matching, you know, that energy and they become masculine and a part of that femininity movement was for women's liberation and now it's like a movement to become masculine and to compete with men i'm not knocking it i'm just saying if you're looking at that from like uh if you're looking at who's performing masculinity what women are performing masculinity as you know objectively i think i could even you know there are white women who would agree with me easily you know and what uh oftentimes what's being called masculinity among black women is nothing more than dark femininity so please please don't let them talk you out of your power. I'm up a unicorn. My coffee is good and my morning is good. And I'm out. <laughs>